Yes.
Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I think I switched, switched into a southern <laughs> accent there. Good morning. It's good to have you all with us this morning. To everyone on Facebook and on Zoom, I'm really hoping you can hear me and hear me well this morning. We've had various technical weirdnesses going on, and even in our Zoom room last week, it just wouldn't even connect. So we're glad you're, you're with us and hope you can, can hear us as well. Just a few announcements this morning. Um, a reminder that we are still in a phase of, of no congregational singing. Just sing in your head this week, but next week we will resume congregational singing. Still masked though, and there's been some question why. Why I'm vaccinated, why can't we? Well, we still have members who cannot be vaccinated for different autoimmune issues, and so we want to protect their health. And a reminder that children under the age of 12 still are not cleared for vaccines yet. So we want to be respectful and welcoming to all of our folks. And so that's why we will continue to wear masks. I especially noticed it last Saturday and Sunday when it was so warm in here. Thank you for fixing the air conditioning. Um, that during the sermon, it was almost like synchronized gasping for air from the congregation. I was watching y'all taking your mask and going, <gasps> and then putting it back on again. So today you won't have to do that, but um, it had me rather amused up here at times just watching that happen. Following worship today, there will be script sales right outside under the carport, and we will be doing that every Sunday until we completely exhaust our supply of script. Uh, things have changed so much, the desire for them, and also it's different how much gets remitted back to the congregation. And so we will be eliminating that type of program. Those three, and then one, one final announcement, a sad note uh, this morning. Uh, we were informed very early this morning that Evelyn Stamm who uh, is the mother of Terry Gorgon, passed away suddenly uh, this morning and unexpectedly. So we will remember Terry and her family in our prayers this morning corporately, but I also invite you to remember them in your prayers this week as well. And that's all I have for announcements. Why don't we take just a quick moment of silence just to center ourselves and prepare our hearts for worship together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our opening song is, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Bye. 
tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nourish our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in, those need. in need. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the 92nd chapter of, of Psalm. Come closer. There we go. So I need help on this. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, name O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, on the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp, for you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes out with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I forgot to say it during our announcements, and I've been intentionally trying to say this every week because it really touches my heart, and I really, really mean this. 
a huge thank you to all of our all of our volunteers. I mean, we couldn't pull this off, especially with the technology and the way that we're leading music and signing people in and ushers and tech. I mean, it really is an amazing thing. So thank you all so very, very much. Our, our gospel reading for today has two parables. And you might remember if you were here last week that I mentioned that parable means riddle that Jesus taught them using these little riddles along the way. And both of these are about the kingdom of God. We've got to stop there just for a second to kind of look at what Jesus is saying about the kingdom of God here. First of all, he's, he's not talking about heaven. And he's not talking about something that is to come. He's talking about right now. Whether it's the right now with the disciples and the crowd right now or us right now. And kingdom really isn't a good translation of the word that's used here in the Greek. A better way of saying it is Jesus is talking about the reign of God. More like a king would reign over people. Which is a little bit foreign to us you know, living in a democracy, in a republic. We don't have kings and that sort of thing. And we don't talk about reign or kingdoms. But that's really the word that's here of God ruling the entire earth immediately and during this time. So in this first little riddle or parable, Jesus gives this little story about someone who goes outside and scatters seed all about and has no clue about how things work next has no clue about how it takes root, how it sprouts, how it grows up, but just knows when it's time to harvest and comes through with the sickle and takes care of the harvest. Okay. It's interesting that this little parable only appears in Mark's Gospel. And one of the commentators I read this week said that there's a reason for that. It's a, there's a really clear-cut reason why this only appears in Mark's Gospel. Mark is the source of all the other Gospels. So Mark was written first, and whole chunks of Mark, almost word for word, appear in the other Gospels, which is really kind of an interesting and fun study here. But his reasoning for it only appearing in Mark is it is the most boring of all of the parables in the New Testament. I can't argue with him. It's pretty boring. There's nothing fun about it at all. There's nothing really interesting. Guys throw seed, doesn't know how plants grow, but harvests it when it's time. Whoa. I guess even sometimes the Son of Man has trouble telling stories that are interesting and fun and funny. I mean, I get this impression that Jesus tells the first one and looks at his audience and they're all just blankly staring at him like, okay. And so he comes back with another one. He comes back with a second riddle that is humorous. Now, for you and I, we don't see the humor in it. But the people who were sitting there with Jesus at that time would see the humor of it. I mean, first of all, the mustard seed isn't the smallest of all seeds. It's close, but there were seeds in that region that were smaller. But the big part of it is, is when Jesus describes about this great bush that it grows into, that's when there would have been chuckling. That's when people go, oh, yeah, right, whatever, the greatest of shrubs. One commentator even said, yeah, this is the moment where someone will be drinking milk and the milk will come out of their nose because they're chuckling so hard and laughing. Because it wasn't considered to be a great bush. Oh, it was big, and it had lots of branches and lots of birds nested in it. But for many people in Jesus' time, the mustard bush was considered to be a weed. Well, there was some that planted it, but for the most part, it was a weed. So define weed. Well, it's any kind of plant that grows up where you don't want it. Okay? So, if you've got a bush, like a mustard seed bush, 
and it has room for lots and lots of birds, that means that the birds are eating the seed, and then the birds fly off to another location, and how shall we delicately say they plant that seed somewhere else in the ground, and up grows this bush in a place where you don't want it to happen. So Jesus, I just really do have this, this feeling that at this moment, it's like, okay, I'm going to try something a little bit of humor here. And maybe I can get my point across here. So, think of it more as a dandelion than as shrubbery at your house. You know how it is, especially with, with people who have lawns and that their lawns are very well manicured and they're beautiful, and if a dandelion pops up in the middle of that, oh my goodness, you know, out there with the herbicide, out there digging that thing up, making sure the whole root comes up, because your fear is that weed is going to spread, and you're going to have dandelions everywhere. Now me, I, I rather like the dandelion flower. It's a really beautiful shade of yellow. It's very simplistic in the type of flower it is. But, you know, for others, it's invasive. And you're also afraid. Not only is it going to spread in your lawn, but it's going to spread into your neighbor's lawn as well. That the wind will blow that seed if you don't get to it fast enough. Or worse yet, that your neighbor's the one that has the dandelion problem and they're going to spread into yours. That's exactly how so many people in Jesus' day viewed this mustard bush. Last summer was, this summer is actually our first full summer in our new house. And I spent much of the winter trying to decide what to do with our lawn. It's a large lawn, and I counted at least a do dozen different varieties of grass in our lawn. Well, I'm sure some of it's weed too. And being so close to the water, I don't want to spray it because I don't want that to get down into the groundwater or run off or anything else like that. So I was trying to figure out what to do with this. And what also do I need to do about this herd of geese, over 60 of them at a time, that roam our yard and plant seeds all over my lawn, especially this year where we haven't had rain to help dilute that. I mean, I, it's safe to say that our lawn is um, over-fertilized at this point with that many geese around. But I've, there was one area of the lawn specifically last year that I was concerned about. There wasn't a lot of grass in there. It was mostly weeds. It's closer to the water. But there were these weird like paths in the weeds where it was down to the bare ground. We know what caused that. When we were moving in last year, there was high water around there, and so there was about a foot of water in that area of the lawn. And when we were moving in, I mean, literally, we got there and had our keys in hand first time unlocking the door, we heard this noise, this water sort of noise. And we went to explore and found out the noise we were hearing were carp that were up in that water in the yard laying their eggs and then fighting over the fertilization of those eggs. There was carp all over the place. And in there trying to find a good place to lay those seeds, they were using their tails to dig out all of that grass. When the water finally receded, <laughs> we had this weird-looking lawn. So I knew what I wanted to plant there. And it was the same type of grass that we grew at a previous house. It's the pampas-style grass that grows tall, and then in the fall, this bright white plume appears, especially in the sunlight. It's absolutely amazing looking. The reason that grass was because my parents had grown some at their home. And before they both passed away, 
I went into the middle of it with my father's permission and dug up some clumps. And we moved that to the home we owned in Holman because there was a spot that I didn't know what to do with. And so I planted it. And I know what this type of grass does. You may have a clump here and there, but the next year it spreads very quickly and it keeps growing. Well, when we moved to another house, same problem, same sort of spot, we went back to that house, the previous house, because not only did we know the people that we sold the house to, I actually had married that couple a few years earlier. Oh yeah, come get as much as you want. Did that, same result. So when we bought this house, I knew where to go get it. So on the way back from our son's wedding last fall, we stopped and picked some up. Now if you looked at my lawn right now, and you didn't know this, you would look at that part of the lawn and think, what is he doing? <laughs> and is he really that bad at mowing? Because the rest of the grass is this high, and there are six clumps that are about this high right now. And you'd think, what a mess. You know, if neighbors probably drive by and go, wow, you know, he didn't know how to mow a straight line to save his life. But I know what's going to happen. And it may look like a weed right now, but I know what's going to happen. Even this fall, there's going to be beautiful plumes on there. It will produce its fruit. But it takes a while sometimes to find out what that's going to be. But it's more than just a plant to me. And there's more to it than it's just because it originally came from my parents' property. Every time those things bloom, I'm reminded of my parents. And I'm reminded of how much they meant to me in my life, how much I was loved by them and how much I loved them too. It's almost like it has a medicinal value to it. That it's like medicine for my soul. That it warms my heart and brings back wonderful, wonderful, blessed memories. And that's another thing about mustard. You see, some people did intentionally grow it because there's a medicinal value to mustard as well and to that seed. It's still used for many medicines. So while for some it was nothing more than a weed, for others it helped restore health and bring people's lives back in many ways. I said you know, earlier when I talked about in that first parable about how the man didn't know what was going on with that seed, if we look at that in terms of the reign of God, what that means is, at first glance, that God doesn't need us. The seed is planted. God takes it from there. The reign of God takes off and it spreads and it moves and it does all of that and we're not needed. It'd be easy to come to that conclusion if we miss the very first action of that. God still relies on us. The seed relies on someone to scatter it. Someone to sow that seed. Someone to tell of the reign of God and why it's not a reign in the sense of an angry king or a bad king. But that's an amazing reign of God. And what that means for us and who this Jesus is, and what it is that God in the form of Jesus has done for us as well. It doesn't really matter how big or small that seed really is. Helping a friend carry groceries into the house, that could be the seed. Sitting with friends while their loved one is having surgery, that could be it. Even something simple as giving a wave or saying hello to someone, that can be the seed. Because as the sower scatters it, 
as the birds scatter it, we don't know where it's going to land. And we don't know what's going to happen next. That's where we trust the Creator to take over. Make it happen. Start it here in this spot with me, with just a simple thing, and we'll see what happens from there. And while we're at it, let's be careful that we don't mistake a seed that is growing for good to be a weed. And that we're so anxious to pluck it up and cast it off and throw it away. Because sometimes what's sprouting can really surprise us. Can really amaze us. Because we have to remember that it is God who is at work. Not us, but it's God who is at work tending that and making it to grow. And after all, what sprouts up from that, that we might think initially is a weed, might just be the medicine that we need for our souls. Thanks be to God for sowers. Thanks be to God for God being God who makes the growth happen. Amen. Together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe of Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven our church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. We remember before you this day, Barb, Joan, Judy, Kelly, Chip, Julie, Diana Jane, Amanda, Chris, the grieving family of Evelyn Stam, and those we name in our hearts before you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. To the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Yes. No.
For all of you who are watching at home, we invite you, if you have bread and wine or crackers and grape juice, whatever it might be, to join together with us the Feast of our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. True and living God, you do not judge by outward appearances, but look upon the heart. You came among us in your Son Jesus, whose appearance was one with us and whose heart was one with you. You call your church in human form. Send upon us your Holy Spirit, that we may become one with you in faith and hope and love. By that same Spirit, take this food and drink, whose outward appearance is bread and wine, and make for them, make them for us, the body and blood of your Son Jesus, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Promising God, you set our hearts to anticipate your harvest, in which all that turns to you is transformed. Uphold all who live in the midst of famine, that the bread of your eternal banquet may bring hope to the hungry. Strengthen any who walk in the desert of despair, that the wind of your kingdom may give sustenance to those who thirst. Blessed all who labor and are heavy laden, that the sacrifice you made once for all may inspire them to walk with you until the time for tears is done and you fill heaven and earth with the ever-rolling stream of your righteousness. One God, now and forever. Amen. The disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he taught them, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the feast of our Lord for our Lord's people. Let us share together in that feast. This is the body of Christ given for me and the blood of Christ shed for me. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We join in our sending song.
some seed and share the good news. Thank Thanks be to God. God.